Hey guys, welcome to another episode of TFB TV. Today we've got a special small arm here, which is the M1919A4 machine gun. This is actually a is made from an Israeli parts kit and it's actually in 308. So it's not a true 30 06 US made 1919. However, it is essentially a one to one representation of an actual 19. And today I also have with me is Corey, is a reenactor in Kentucky, and you previously saw him on the M1A1 carbine video. And Corey's going to talk a little bit about the history of the 1919 and its use by U.S. forces in World War II. So Corey, tell us about the 1919. Well, it started life as the 1917 water-cooled machine gun for World War I, and they quickly realized that's really, really heavy. Okay. So they developed the air-cooled version in 1919 here, and it's a whole family of firearms. Uh, Let's see. I think it's. You said it was a light mi or a light firearm or something like that. Well, today we'd probably consider it a light machine gun. Light machine gun. Yeah, it ain't light. <laughs> uh oh. Um, it it actually have you. You needed about a crew of four. You needed one guy to move around the gun, one guy to carry the tripod, and two ammo bearers. Okay. Um, and this would be issued probably about one per platoon. This would be their base of fire. Okay. So they're covering fire element. Interesting. Uh, so. How was it utilized during the war? What did soldiers think of it? Did soldiers like it? Was it reliable? What's uh, what's the general synopsis from history that tells us? There's accounts all through the war. They absolutely loved the things. They ran. They just ran. Mm -hmm. You could. It took a lot to break these things. Okay. The, the only complaint, they were heavy. Yeah. So they tried to lighten them up um, with the 1919 A6, which actually made it heavier. Which made it, it heavier, and it mm -hmm. actually, to me, un more unwieldy because you had to have an extra buttstock, you had a tripod out front, but it was supposed to be you, you would eliminate the the uh, tripod here, and it had a bipod, a bipod, right? That's what it is. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I think a lot of guys would take the stock, the butt pad, the the stock, stock off, off, right, and the bipod off as well, right, and just use it in this roll. <sighs> That's that sucks. <laughs> um, so what we're looking at, uh, let's can we can you describe it from front to rear? All right. So we have our booster cap, which would actually trap the gases and help recoil the barrel because this barrel is actually very 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 heavy. Okay. It's a very thick walled barrel. We have our perforated barrel jacket. Okay. So allow for a lot of air movement going on. However, they still got hot. So I've wrapped this in a uh, empty cloth belt that would be used for ammunition. Um, obviously, these things do get all very, very hot when you have to move around. You have to just grab the barrel, and this protects your hands, the shooter's hand. And this is historically accurate. GIs would use this in World War II. Absolutely. You see a lot of pictures of people doing that, and even trying to make slings out of used cloth belts. Our front sight here is folding, so it can get quickly out of the way. And I think the front sight's adjustable for windage as well? For windage, for zeroing, but your main windage, if you have to adjust on the fly, is taken care of with the rear sight. You've got your feeding mechanism up top. This could feed either cloth belts, which they started the war with, or they could feed it with metal disintegrating links, which were later war. Okay, so there actually were metal disintegrating links used in the war. Yes. By American forces. Correct. Because I think that was a German thing at the beginning of the war, at the 42s, right? Uh, the 34 and the 42 both use metal belts, and they're semi- disintegrating. They, okay. they disintegrate in like 50 round okay. sections. The top cover has three positions. You have all the way forward, you have about 45 degree angle so you can service the gun, do whatever you need to do, and then all the way down in the closed position. Okay, and that is held in place by a locking bar that is just underneath the rear sight. Uh -huh. And then finally we've got the rear sight. These are very, very finely adjusting when you have it flipped up. Um, if you flip it down, it's basically a standard, I think it's about 150, 200 yard uh, notch, mm -hmm. and then in the up position it's a peep sight. So it is not adjustable here? Correct, it, in the I down can, position. Okay. But if I flip it up, mm -hmm. it's adjustable from 200 to, looks like 1800? Yeah. On here? They were very optimistic. Okay. <laughs> well, and that was also good because you could lay down covering fire, you can lay down arcing fire, and just basically an aerial um, area suppression weapon. And so your, your specific model is a semi-automatic only, mm -hmm. made by uh, U.S. Ordnance? U.S. Ordnance out of Sparks, Nevada. I think they're no longer in business. Okay. And I think the only people making this today is Ohio Ordnance. Correct. Okay. 
and they make BARs and other similar representations, but it's semi-automatic only. The tripod, um, this is the M2 tripod. It's very, very low to the ground, so you can easily get into very, very good cover. Um, <clears throat> basically, the, the 50 caliber tripod was just a bigger version of this. This tripod weighs about 15 pounds. It does fold up, but it's not still not very comfortable to haul around. The, the, the feet dig into the ground very, very well. Can can I adjust it f to make it higher? No. Okay. So I'm a fix. Setting. Yes. Okay. So I'm fixed with the adjustment here. Mm -hmm. Okay. The adjustment is actually taken care of with the traversing and elevation mechanism on the rear of the gun. Okay. Which you can again find a fine adjustment. Interesting. So, in in addition, something that I'd like to point out with machine gunnery and machine gun tactics is you a lot of a lot of machine gunners don't necessarily use the adjustments in the rear sight, they instead use the T and E elevation to move the gun up or down mm -hmm. um, if they need to adjust their fire, something that's very different with, than a handheld rifle where you adjust the sights or you use Kentucky winnage. Mm -hmm. The guy that actually gets to shoot, this, shoot the gun does not actually have to tote around the gun. He totes around the, the tripod because tripod he determines where it gets set down. Intra yeah, interesting. No, he's a lucky guy. And the actual World War II gunner would have towed around the uh, tripod instead of the gun. Correct. Okay. And then your assistant gunner would tr uh, towed around the big, heavy piece of metal. Mm -hmm. And then he would act as um, ammo bearer, or he would help load a ammunition in this. Hey, thank you very much for watching, guys. And we'd like to thank ProxyBid. They're an online firearms auction site that supports our channel and really helps us bring this kind of content to TFB TV. Uh, until next time.